buy this book it's the bible it's one book but you get 66 for one come on praise the lord up in here everybody and uh, after the service i'm going to be sitting at booth number 35 we're going to be signing a couple of books over and the chief is going to be hugging and kissing everybody amen and all the proceeds from Chi-Chi's Kisses will go towards uh, KICC's building fund. Amen. Amen. It's an honor for Chi-Chi and I to be with you this evening. And uh, we truly honor what God is doing through this incredible vessel, the angel of this house that uh, is an example around the world. You know, in our country, uh, where we're having such difficult times, there are many, many government ministers who have a few people they listen to and Apostle Matthew Ashmelova is one of the very few that are listened to by many of our government leaders. It's a real honor. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Amen. Thank you for staying to the course. And of course, uh, it's an honor to be here with our entire staff. Everybody I know, God bless you. Amen. Israel and new breed. Amen. All right. Let's go now to chapter number 47 of the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel 47. 55 minutes and 55 seconds. Timing, all right? Ezekiel 47, starting from verse number three. The man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward and measured a thousand cubits, brought me to the waters that were to my ankles. Then he took me another thousand and brought me to waters that to my knees, another thousand waters to my loins, another thousand, they were waters to swim in. Let's go now to John chapter number 7, verse 35. John 7, 35. John 7, verse 35. John 7, verse 37. Verse 37, in the last day of the feast, Jesus stood with a cloud voice saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Someone say drink. drink. Say thirst. Drink. If you believe on me, as the scripture has said, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Say rivers. Drink. Living water. Drink. This he spoke of the Spirit. Everyone say he spoke of the Spirit. Father, thank you for this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. Without trying to be too dogmatic this evening, I want to introduce a couple of things. Uh, here's a statement I'd like to make, and you probably will have to get this uh, CD. Tell somebody, get the CD. Yes. Tell someone else, get the DVD. Yes. For every demonic system, there is a kingdom model. that replaces the demonic system for every demonic system there is a kingdom model that replaces the demonic system so whatever demonic system they might be there is a kingdom system oh mandela are you here amen there is a kingdom system that will replace the demonic system a kingdom model a lot of times what we try to do is we we try to uh, indoctrinate people instead of helping them build a system the the reason for example a ministry like KICC or David Bishop Oyedepo or the redeemed fellas you know, I'm using Nigerian examples or Mensa Artible or anybody that's building a, an apostolic house. The reason they are successful there is not entirely because of the anointing of the set man. That's the first thing. But most of the reason it is because the set man has set a model. And when the model is built in any place, people that may never meet the set man, the apostle, the bishop, if they adhere to the principles of that model, they will become what the model is and thus successful. Put your hand on your head and say, build the model. Build the model. Isn't it amazing when you say, put your hand on your head, all the single girls put up their left hand?
Everybody say, build the model. You all pray, amen. You all pray, pray, amen. It's crazy up here. It is important that as we're building models, we understand a number of imperatives. We are not going to be effective, effective in the 21st century without understanding dimensions. Every individual that was used in the Bible significantly, they were dimensionalists. They were establishmentarians. <laughs> Being a dimensionalist means that you understand higher laws. In other words, you are ahead of the problem, solving the problem before it is created. Most times we are chasing the problem, trying to resolve issues that are mutating, even as we speak. So you will always be chasing the problem. To amend societies from drug addiction, alcoholism, uh, miscreants that are involved in uh, illicit sexual behavior, such as pornography and so on, we are not going to resolve those problems by chasing them. The way we are resolving, going to resolve these problems is by going way into the future, dimensionally, ahead of them, creating systems that replace these complexities. As long as we are chasing problems as a church, body of Christ, we are always going to be playing second best in anything we do. Say, I am a dimensionalist. Everybody say, I'm a dimensionalist. We are about to define a dimension. Another word for dimension is understanding mysteries. The Lord said to his disciples, he said, you have key information. It's understanding mysteries. He said, because they are people that we address every day. They hear, but they're not listening. They see, but they're not seeing. Because when you understand a mystery or a dimension, you actually go into another world and you break down that world. So mysteries and dimensions are the same things. The devil came to Jesus in chapter number 4 of Matthew and 4 of Luke. And he says to Jesus, can you see these kingdoms? I'll give all of them to you if you'll bow down and worship me. So what Satan was trying to do, he was trying to access what Jesus had by offering him a barter deal. So if you'll worship me, I will give you this. Now, what Lucifer didn't understand was that he is linear. Linear meaning he is subject to what already has been established. When he sees something, he will then invert it and duplicate it and manipulate the system for his cause. Individuals in the body of Christ are not supposed to be linear. You are supposed to be punctilious, which is multi-dimensional. When you look at a situation, the complexities of Africa, the complexities of an Islamic society that's beginning to hold a world to ransom, the complexities of Buddhism or Shintoism or Hinduism, the complexities of churchianity, the complexities of social dilemmas and disorders. We are not going to resolve those by counseling and by a word. It has to be done by dimensional activity, dimensional thoughts. Now let me give an idea of a dimensionalist, the common denominator. If I give a child 20 pounds, I will not change that child's life necessarily. I will be a blessing. But if I give that child a house, I am now giving that child a gift of destiny and not being a blessing. So it is important for every person in this room to purpose in your life that at least one time in your life you are going to give a gift of destiny. Say a gift of destiny. Being a blessing is not good enough, but giving a gift of destiny is being a dimensionalist. Say a gift of destiny. Say a gift of destiny. Say a gift of destiny. The Lord said, I'm giving you houses you did not build, wells you didn't dig, vineyards you did not plant. It's not about the house or the vineyard or the well. What God was doing, he was accelerating years. Because it takes many, many years to gather the materials and build the house. 
So the fact that he's giving you a house is actually accelerating time in your life where you don't have to work in labor. Shout a gift of destiny. Say a gift of destiny. To be one that gives the gift of destiny, you have to understand dimensions. There are 10 basic dimensions. 10 basic dimensions. This information is based on what is called the string theory. The string theory is when the high priest, once a year, went into the holiest of holies wearing a garment. On his garment, at the hem of his garment, would be a bell and a pomegranate. Between the bell and the pomegranate were ten tassels, five white, five blue. A bell is witness, the pomegranate is fruit. So every time the priest walked, he walked in fruit and witness. But he also walked dimensionally. So when he entered into the holiest of holies once a year, he was entering into a place of dimensions. Watch this. When the woman of the, with the issue of blood touched one string of his garment, she was not touching just a string. She was being moved from a place of disease and sickness into a dimension of life. The fact that she touched the string meant that she was moved radically with acceleration from death, destruction into health, life, and blessing. Here are the ten dimensions very quickly. The first one is the dimension of faith. Number two, the dimension of light. Number three, wisdom and knowledge. Number four, revelation and truth. Am I going too fast? Good, good. Get the CD. <laughs> Number four, revelation and truth. Number five, power. The dimension of power. There are several words for power. You can... All right. The dimension of life. Number six. Number seven, kings. The dimension of kings. Number eight, the dimension of prosperity. Number nine, healing and miracles. And the tenth one is worship and the prophetic, the supernatural. These are ten basic dimensions. They have sub-dimensions. Now when you begin to enter dimensionally, you cannot function in the rhetoric of religion or the rhetoric of human existence or bound by tradition or bound by tribalism or bound by culture or bound by human limitations. When you enter into a dimension, you enter into a world of inexhaustible resources. You enter into a world where when Jesus enters into the world of blessing, the Father says, this is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. The Bible says the heavens were opened. The word heavens there is different to the word heavens used in other places. In other words, dimensions opened unto Jesus. Everybody say dimensions are opening to me. Say that again. When we deal with dimensions, this evening we want to touch very, very brief, briefly the dimension of prophetic blessing. When we enter into these levels or these dimensions, we are now going to have our lives completely revolutionized. Where we are literally living way in the future, creating passage for things to happen. Now watch this. When Jesus heals a certain woman's daughter that is bound demonically, the only way he can heal her is when she moves herself dimensionally. He says to her, she says to him rather, my daughter is dying, she is possessed with a demonic spirit. Jesus says, I cannot heal her because it wasn't the time for this girl to be healed. She was locked in a time zone that did not permit, permit gentilic blessing. It was a time zone that prohibited gentilic access to the covenant of God. So the way she had to get the blessing was to move dimensionally. She had to shift from a time zone of gentilic confinement to a place where God was blessing all people. Matthew, uh, rather, Acts chapter number 15, verse 26, where all nations are made out of one blood. So she had to move herself philosophically and conceptually and physically 
from a, an area of depravity and confinement to a place of dimensional blessing where there is no discrimination, where there is no uh, marginalization of the gift and the blessing of God. The only way she did that when she said, yes, Lord, even though I am a dog, which is the confinement of gentilic existence, she says, even the dogs are entitled to breadcrumbs, which is revelation knowledge on another level. It is my entitlement as a woman that is seeking the things that God has to give. The minute she moved dimensionally, she was amending Jesus' job description. Because the dimensionalist will amend what is limited to a time zone. Can I preach up in here? Now listen to me. As long as we stay within the definitions or the definitives of what groups of people say about us, you, whether you are a woman, a certain age group, whether you are a certain culture, tribe, religious affiliation, as long as people define you, they judge you according to their definition. But when you move dimensionally, they cannot find a definition for you. Be because you're hard to figure out. The Pharisees don't know how to touch you. Those in Nazareth don't know how to deal with you. Those in Capernaum are trying to figure out. Even your disciples are trying to put a title on you. Whom do men say that I am? So he's been defined as Jeremiah because he weeps. He's been defined as Elijah because he's got fire in his spirit. He's designed as Isaiah. But Jesus then says, whom do you say that I am? Peter says, you are the Christ. When he says that, he leaves a definition of human existence and moves dimensionally. Shout, I am a dimensionalist. <laughs> Amen. Now watch this very quickly. As we walk dimensionally and we deal with the prophetic, the prophetic is like a flow of water. Very quickly now. There are seven manifestations of water in the Old and New Testament. Jesus said, rivers will flow out of you. This is the Spirit. So anytime you have water mentioned, it is a definition of the Spirit. Just hang with me for a few minutes. It's a definition of the Spirit. So anytime you have water mentioned, the metaphor usually is inverted or applied to a move of the Spirit. The second metaphor in the use of water sometimes is a Babylonian system but for this presentation water is going to be a move and a manifestation of the spirit here are the seven manifestations of water the first one is mist mist m-i-s-t the second one is dew mist number one is to water your world but it's not enough to cause a flood in your life Dew, according to the, Gen the Genesis rendition, dew is given to water your garden, your personal vision. Many times people, the smaller your world, the less your mist. Your life is never moist. It doesn't give effervescence to the things that you are building in your life. So you have to expand your world. I hate the fact that people pray for the wealth of the wicked and they don't have a global view. You don't deserve to get the wealth of the wicked if you don't have a global view. Why gold costs 700 plus dollars an ounce? Why fuel is going to 75 dollars a barrel? Why certain economic conditions? Why Malaysia, Singapore, Dubai are increasing as world powers? Why China is becoming a center today? You, you are not going to access the wealth of the wicked if you don't have a global viewpoint. Put your hand on your head and say increase your world. The more you increase your world, the greater the mist in your life. Number two, do your personal garden. What you are doing in your life personally. Tell the person next to you, you've got to go to school. Tell him, Sabrina, don't be scared of him. Tell him, you've got to go to school. Do. Number three, rain. Rain. R-A-I-N. Rain. There are several manifestations of rain in the, in, the, in the Bible. We're not going to deal with these dynamics of rain. Rain always speaks of blessing. Blessing. These are levels of blessings. You have blessing, prosperity, generosity. Blessing, prosperity, generosity. That depends on the rain falling on your life. 
Number four, rivers. This is where I'm coming today. Rivers speaks of the prophetic move of the Holy Spirit in your life. When the children of Israel were crossing from Jordan onto the other side of the river Jordan, the exercise was not crossing a river. That was not the exercise. The exercise was understanding the move of the Spirit. They had to cross Jordan when it was swollen. You have to understand when to cross over in floods, in dimensions of the Spirit. Number four, number five, whatever number, anyone's good. Number five, wells, W-E-L-L-S. -L wells is a generational blessing. Wells speaks of generations. Every major player in the Bible got his wife at a well, including Jesus. Really? Abraham was a well digger. It placates that he probably got Sarah at a well. Isaac's wife, Rebecca, came from a well. Leah and Rachel came from a well. Moses got his girl from a well. So on and so forth. Jesus got his wife at a well. In chapter number 4 of Matthew, the Bible says he sat on Jacob's well. And a Samaritan woman came out of the city. She was Samaritan. She was Gentile and Jewish. She came at noonday, which is the foundational structure of the scriptures. When she approached him, he asked her if she had anything to give him water from. And then she makes the statement, how can you, a Jew, which is the originator of the covenant, give me water to drink? If you knew, he said, who was asking you, you wouldn't ask who's giving you water. Then he says, go get your husband. And she makes this profound statement. I don't have a husband. He said, you've answered right. Because she was married to five dispensations before her. Innocence, conscience, human government, promise, and the law. The husband she was living with was grace. But she wasn't married to grace because grace was not yet given. So she was living with something that was not yet given. So when Jesus hooked up with that girl at the well, it was a metaphor of Jew and Gentile being solicited in the power of grace. The reason you have to have wells in your life, wells placates a generational blessing. You have to build generationally. When J Joseph's brothers threw him in a well, the well was dry. That was implicatory of the dryness of their lives generationally. Shout generations are coming out of me. They will be mighty on the earth. Number six. Number six. Jesus, you got to help me here. Seas. S-E-A-S. Seas. There are two types of seas in the Bible. Freshwater sea and a saltwater sea. Freshwater seas you walk on. It's a type of revelation knowledge that you master. Jesus walked on the sea. And he told Peter, if you get out of the boat, which is the system to get you across, you can walk on revelation that's been given to man. Salt water seas, you don't walk on a salt water sea. Ask Moses, you go through it. You part the revelation so that you can go into another level of existence. And the seventh dimension of water are the waters above Noah and the waters beneath. If you want a global flood, you have to access waters above, which is the mind or the, dis the dimensions in which God lives in. Someone say, I am a dimensionalist. Come on, say that with passion. All right, I have 20 minutes to land this bad boy. The problem is that many of us use a standard of ministry or business that is a non-realistic standard. The word non-realistic here means it is a standard that is not biblically based. We measure things in the 21st century by how big something is. Success is only measured by two things. Number one, obedience to God. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And number two, your ability to raise a successor. A successor. The works that I do, you shall do also, and greater works than these shall you do. So our entire life then is spent on raising David or Solomon. 
raising Elijah and Elisha, raising Moses or Joshua, raising Jesus, a group of individuals that you can check out of your hotel at the age of 33 and know that the men you have entrusted, an entire kingdom dynamic, that they will build this thing without you being present there with them. In three and a half years, he raised an incredible successor. Twelve men, eleven, twelve men that he trained over a period of time. And he breathed on them. Receive the spirit to build what I've been teaching you. But when we look at a western standard of success, we tend to be intimidated when something isn't as big as we think it should be. I'm telling you, all of you folks that are not Nigerian, that have, that have never been to Nigeria, I encourage you that if you ever go to Nigeria, do not leave that place feeling like you've not done anything. Because all the Nigerians are crazy. I'm serious. You see what they are doing there in terms of sheer numbers, buildings, money, Aeroplanes, jets, tents in East London. It's like, oh God. And you can feel like you're not doing anything. Mensa Audible was with us a few weeks ago and he went to preach for Bishop Oyedepo, speak at his graduation. And Mensa, who has a university, Mensa, who has a massive church, he came back holding his head. He said, I feel like I'm doing nothing. And like Pastor Matthew says, he says, David or your depot is crazy. He's wild. He's got crazy faith. But if you try to align your little one loaf church to what Bishop or your depot is doing, you're going to feel like you know, you're going to feel like the dirt under somebody's baby fingernail. Someone say success is based on obedience. Now, because we have success in a mental way of a Western measurement, we tend to want to be announced. In other words, we want our name to be in headlights or in, in some DVD or some neon sign. And our entire ambition is built on having that done. Success is based on strategically walking with God here a little, there a little. Precept on precept, line on line. And here is the caveat to this, is that as God begins to elevate you, you are going to discover some important things that before you ever got here, the blessing of God was already sanctioned in your life. It's a proven fact that when Mary got the announcement that Jesus was about to be born, the men bringing the gifts were on their journey before he was announced. Before the angel said to Mary, you're going to have a son, there were already men coming with gifts in terms of millions of dollars of revenue before he was ever announced. So when you begin to purpose, I am a dimensionalist, the gifts to empower you, the gifts to strengthen you, the buildings you need, the contacts and, and blessing you need is already moving towards you. So don't worry if you stay on track, God is going to bless you. Put your hand on someone's head and say, dimensions. dimensions. Say that with passion. Now quickly, as I said last night, let me take you down to Ezekiel. Where Ezekiel was prophesying, he was prophesying to a group of people who were accustomed to living amongst dead things. So God then brings Ezekiel as a dimensionalist, puts him in a river that's dry. There's no water in that river. In other words, there's no rain falling, there's no mist, there's no dew. But when he stands in this dry riverbed, Ezekiel already has his mind changed that I'm going to be a dimensionalist. So the first thing that's going to happen in Ezekiel's life in the river is his ankles are going to get wet. The word ankles getting wet here is not a level of the spirit. It's an empowerment to do something. When his ankles get wet, it means it's an anointing to walk in things he's never walked in before. I came to tell someone here, as you begin to move dimensionally, God's about to anoint your feet and get you to walk in things you have never walked in before. 
You've never walked in investments. You've never walked in company stuff. You've never walked in business. You've never had tea with Queen Elizabeth. Yeah, right. <laughs> but I came to tell you guys about to change your laugh. You're not going to laugh like somebody from the middle of the bush in Zimbabwe. <laughs> You're going to laugh like the Queen. <laughs> Put your hands on your feet and say my feet are getting wet that's why you must be nice to the person sitting next to you because most of their life they've been standing in a dry river but in a meeting like this when we're talking about kingdom dominion their feet start getting wet god shifts you from one place and moves you to another place just because your feet are wet shut my feet are wet Jesus called 12 men and said, boys, I have to wash your feet. When he washed their feet, Judas wasn't there to get his feet wet. If your feet get wet, you'll walk in apostolic anointing like you've never had. But you've got to get your feet wet. Put your hands on your feet and shut my feet are wet. feel a wet feet anointing coming in the room we have some challenges we have to walk in in this century but it's not gonna happen with dry feet oh somebody your feet James Brown I feel good my feet are getting wet yay though I walk through I'm walking through with wet feet someone shot my feet are wet can I preach for two more minutes The second thing is that his knees are wet. Someone say wet knees. This is a dimension of the spirit. Wet knees is not a level. It's an anointing where your prayers are about to be answered. Oh Jesus, help me. When Ezekiel's knees got wet, he's telling everybody, you are entering into a season where your prayers are about to be answered. Shout, my knees are wet. I know we've been praying for Africa for a long time but it seems like nothing is happening but in this season some woman that's been praying for years cries to wet your knees some preacher you've been praying every weekend all night prayer Early morning prayer, lunchtime prayer, breakfast prayer, pray on bus 33, pray on 257, pray on the Jubilee line, prayer in economy class going to Lagos. But in this season, God's about to wet your knees, weeping may endure for a night. Joy. Is about they that sow in tears you're gonna reap in joy your knees are about to get wet something thinking pray for a breakthrough Elijah there's a famine in the land we need a breakthrough so he kneels down and he prays once and nothing happens because his knees were not wet pray again he prays another time but his knees are not wet hold your knees say my knees are wet god's about to wet your knees elijah pray seven times on the seventh time his knees are wet. What he couldn't have, he's gonna, Jesus, help me. Come on, clap your hands for wet knees. Put your hands on someone's knees. Say, baby, your knees are wet. God's about to visit the white people in London. We've been praying for the white community in the city of London for a long time but it's not by my 
power. There's a revival coming to the white community. I had not seen, you has not heard. God's about to wet your knees and answer your prayers. I know you've been praying for a financial breakthrough. In the season, your knees are getting wet. Well, yeah. Come on, 10 seconds. Praise him for wet knees. Yeah! 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 God will answer your prayer any place you're praying. Men ought always to pray and not faint. Avenge me of my adversary. Avenge me of my adversary. Avenge me of my adversary. At midnight, keep on knocking. I need bread for my friends. When you pray, say, Thy will be done. The devil is a liar. I'm going to pray until I get that breakthrough. In the season, my knees are getting wet. Here comes my prayer. Give someone a high five and say, baby, your knees are wet. What you couldn't have yesterday, you will have today. Woo! There is a season when God will answer your prayer. Yesterday he couldn't do it because it was locked in a time zone. But God's in an answering mood tonight. Whatever you pray for, believe that you receive and you shall have them. Pray a crazy prayer. Open your mouth and declare, God is gonna hear you. Can I preach for two more minutes? The next thing Ezekiel finds himself, he finds himself in a river that's waist deep. Some would say waist deep. This is not another level. It's an anointing. Waist deep means that his reproductive system was about to be activated. Woo! I know you've been barren for years. You could not conceive seeds. I know you've had ideas that no one would receive. But Ezekiel, in this season, your reproductive system huh, is about to be activated. Put your hand here. Say, I feel like I'm pregnant. I know you're pregnant with something. Yesterday you couldn't carry Hannah. This baby, you went to the temple every year, praying with Penaya. But every year, Penaya's having a baby, and you still can't have a baby. It's not that you're not intimate, but it's not your season. But Hannah, this year, when you come into the temple, the atmosphere is different. There's a dimension that you're walking in. Hannah, baby. Ah, what you couldn't have last year or on your wedding night without even trying too hard. Hannah, you're about to get pregnant. Yeah, yeah. Hannah, Samuel's on the way. Hannah, the blessing is on the way. Hannah, the property's on the way. Hannah, the breakthrough is here. Hannah, what was dead is alive. Hannah came to tell you that what your friend said you couldn't do. Hannah, in the season, Zion's gonna bring forth. In the season, the baby's coming. Go home, Hannah. Get the bottles ready. 
Get the nursery ready. Get some baby clothes ready. Hannah, go for some lessons. Get some vitamin E oil because you're about to grow. You're about to expand. Change your wardrobe. It's your season for a breakthrough. Clap your hands, Hannah. Sing, oh Baron. Sing, oh Baron. When you sing to your dry well, Moses, the well will spring up. Spring up, oh well. There's some things you can't pray for. There's some things you can't worship for. But if you sing to your barren situation, sing unto the Lord a new song. What was dead is coming up. So sing to your money. Sing to your babies. Sing to your future. Sing to your blessing. Sing to the deadness of your womb. There is a dimension of the spirit and it's coming to you. You walking in it tonight. Elizabeth, John is coming. Rachel, Joseph is coming. Leah, Reuben is coming. Manoah, Samson is coming. Mary, Jesus is coming. Shout three times. It is my time. Sarah. Sarah. Hagar had a baby. And you look down on yourself. But Sarah, your blessing is coming. Isaac, yeah. Isaac, yeah. Clap your hand for your Isaac. If you knew Isaac was going to be here next year, put your hand here and shout, it's coming. Closing. What is this woman? That means an anointing on your head to think. It's dimensions. Someone here, someone here is about to swim in the money. It's not ankle deep. It's not knee deep. It's not even waist deep. Someone's about to swim in the breakthrough. You're about to swim in the spirit. You're about to swim in ideas. About to swim in concepts. My God, anybody can support Chelsea. We need a real soccer team in here. That's gonna swim in the blessing. Shout, I'm swimming in the blessing. Shout, I'm swimming in the blessing. We need some FA Cup holders that know how to swim in the blessing. Shout, I'm swimming in the blessing. Shout, I'm swimming in my breakthrough came to tell you tonight uh, you're about to swim in a new relationship your marriage about to swim in love and romance baby you're about to get married you're about to swim oh yeah I need some swimmers here tonight people that want to swim upstream People that want to swim against the grain. People that want to swim in what they believe. People that want to swim in their confession. People that want to possess their possession. I'm looking for some swimmer that's from a place uh, that no one has ever heard. Uh, but you're willing to get out the boat uh, and swim. 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 Swim! Just shake yourself. Shake 
shake yourself shake off that rubbish shake off that limitation shake off that generational curse shake off that linear mind and start swimming dimensionally but now shake somebody just shake someone say I'm shaking you out of your mess into your blessing shake me baby but don't break me shake me into my blessing Join hands with a swimmer. No, not somebody that's lazy like. Join hands with a swimmer. Someone that's sick and tired of being limited. Oh, out of your belly will flow rivers, rivers, water to walk in waters to have your prayer answered pregnancy is coming but waters to swim it swim swim until it swim in your healing Swim in your healing. There's healing in the room. We command you to be healed. Swim in your blessing. The curse is broken. The struggle is over. The limitation has gone. I refuse to be limited. Swim. Swim. Swim, 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 swim. Don't worry about who's next to you. Baby, swim. Get your swim on. Swim for Ghana. Swim for Uganda. Swim for Nigeria. Swim for Zimbabwe. Swim for Texas, swim for Hackney, swim for London, swim for Birmingham, swim for DC. Swim. Swim for your next album. Swim for your book. Swim for your family. Swim for your boys. Swim for your international ministry. Swim! Swim for Watford! Clap your hands like you're a swimmer! anointing of the Holy Ghost coming in the room God's about to lift someone Bishop Jackson come stand here I feel this on me Bishop not being disrespectful it's about a rain money R rain not a little thank you give me some hand me down welfare some piece of nonsense check it's about a rain some money i need a strong man to come put some money in my hand just bring some money put in my hands quickly quickly sir you can't be just good looking you have to be useful here's a metaphor for somebody that's been struggling for a long time but god's gonna use bishop tonight to illustrate that not by power, not by might, 
but by my spirit it's about a rain blessing and money in your life bishop you could not even if you try you could not spend what's coming to you in the next three months in 10 lifetimes 10 10 lifetimes it's acceleration shout it's raining on my life swim 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 it's raining it's raining swim Thirty seconds, praise him. Thirty seconds, come on. Thirty seconds, just praise him for thirty seconds. Your next album. Your next album. Your next album, my closed eyed friend. Your next album, you're not going to have to pay for. You're not going to have to work for. In the next few weeks, they are coming to you. Whatever you need, wherever you need it, is going to be handed to you. And in six weeks, it's taking you further than anybody has ever been in the gospel world. It's coming. It's coming. Swim! Your album... One word and I'm through. You have just come through the struggle of Jacob. You have crossed over the river. He had to cross the river and go through his final struggle. You have just gone through your last and major struggle. From now, Bishop. From now. Jesus, help me here. What you're about to enter into right now in the next season no man in this entire region has ever entered into please listen to me when you enter into this river when you enter into this river the source is so mighty it cannot be controlled they are about to be in the next three years buildings that are going to be handed to you you won't have to maintain hand it they are going to cut they they are going to come and give you buildings not just here but in many countries they are going to give you buildings my god my hand is getting all Number one, there's a complete television building that's going to be given to you. Complete everything. Complete. And the man that you are, you are going to open doors for so many around the world and give them access. Space in cyber world and satellite space is going to be given to you major shares you're going to be a major shareholder in a satellite network not going to cost you anything in the course of this year there are a number of people who don't have the kind of money that they think they should give you so they're going to give you personally not KICC they are going to give you personally they are going to give you personally shares for you and mom shares they're gonna pay for you your children and your grandsons hey swim
And number three, even though you are a giant, you have not been taking giant steps. You are about now to be the giant that God has called you to be. Watch how this works. What has taken you 10 years to do, you're going to do in 10 days. That's a giant. Swim! That includes every area of your life. There's promotion in this house. Put your right hand on your head and say the head only.